say you go to your high school reunion and people are talking about what they do for a career and you mention that you work for the public library and one of your old friends says, public library, wow, <laughs> I didn't even realize, wow, I mean, I haven't been to, I mean, I haven't been to one, I, why would I go to the public library now that I have the internet with the sum of all human knowledge on my wrist? And you say, tax forms. That's right, because the tax forms we have at the library, they are easier to read than the ones on your wrist. Yeah. What about um, meeting rooms? Yeah. What about them? Hmm. Huh. Okay. The public library has at least two things to offer that the internet does not. Number one, a physical location. <laughs> Number two, a reputation for being about ideas and knowledge and stuff and fiction that inspires and gives perspective to people's lives. To its very great credit, the public library has never spent a lot of time tracking down rumors of Justin Bieber's latest activities. Unlike the internet. So what can you do with a um, yeah, yeah, public meeting place and a reputation for being about ideas and knowledge and stuff. What if you could tell your friends, your so-called snickering friends, what if you could tell them, hey, you may not have to go to the library, but you might want to, because they have this event, like every couple months at one of the branches, there's like 200 people there. And it's not like a bar, no, it's more like um, a library social event. I mean, it's a social event, but yet, because it's a library event, it tends to draw people who are interested in ideas and knowledge and stuff and fiction that inspires and gives perspective. So, you can have a conversation with a complete stranger about some book you read ten years ago, or some lyrics that you like, uh, or, you know, a movie that you watch every couple years for what it brings you, or a TED Talk that you saw two weeks ago, and uh, you're wondering what other people think about it. Okay, I thought of this um, plot for a James Bond movie. The villain, the villain, as portrayed by uh, some British actor, maybe uh, John Cleese. Uh, a librarian who plots to blow up the internet worldwide. Oh, you all see. You'll all be sorry once the internet is gone, won't you? You'll see how important public libraries really are. That's right. You know what else? In one of my past lives, I was a scribe. That's right. I hand copied books, line by line. It was my career. Oh, then along comes this fellow, Gutterberry, with his movable type, such that you could print an entire book on a machine. I could just strangle that Gutterberry. Oh, oh, that was my career. You, you all, you all bloody see. Once movable type is gone and the internet is gone, you'll all see how important scribes and public libraries really are. Or, perhaps, once the public library takes full possession of its potential role as a gathering place, a place of social access to other people who are interested in ideas and knowledge and stuff, fiction that inspires and gives perspective, many people will see how relevant the public library can be.